Hey gang, Rod at East Coast Lumberjack. And I've been mentioning this for a while. We're going to do it finally. Um, this is going to be how to sharpen an axe. Okay, how to sharpen an axe. Doesn't matter whether it's a racing axe or a, what do I have here? I've got a Swedish axe, uh, a pole axe. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> it's the same thing. Now, there's some decent videos out there on YouTube. Um, hats off to the guys that have been doing them. And uh, there's someone asked me about the rag method, okay? So I'm going to explain to you today about why the rag method actually works fairly decent, okay? But I'm going to give you a little bit more precise way to do it. The East Coast Lumberjack is kind of fussy about details, especially on axes. Some things, I'm not a finished carpenter much. Like I don't, uh, I, I just put some nice molding around a new room that I finished in the house. And good thing they make caulking because I can fill a lot of the gaps. <laughs> so I'm learning. Okay, I'm not very, but I don't have the tools for that. Okay, a lot of times it comes down to the tools. And you're going to learn that today on this video. So, again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, there's lots more good stuff coming. But I'm going to try to make this as short and quick as I can how to sharpen axes. But I'm going to explain to you the math behind it. Now, <laughs> we all hated geometry in high school. Well, actually, I didn't mind geometry. I liked math, actually. I was not, a bad, not bad at math. But a lot of people didn't like geometry and said, where in the world am I ever going to use geometry in life? Well, guess what? Today, you're going to find out where. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put you around here so I can explain to you the math behind what we're going to do. Okay, so we'll aim you here at my whiteboard. Okay, so as we know, this is the shape of an axe, okay? So we're going to blow it up a little bit, and then you go back here, comes down, comes back out. Okay, so this is your axe. Can you see that? Oh yeah, we see it really well. And then of course we're going to have our eye. Okay. So, what this is, this is essentially what we want, we know out here on the edge, we want anywhere between, when we chop, we want 14 degrees. But on most axes, like this one here, okay, two pound head, which is what most guys are going to be into sharpening, you want that about 18 degrees. Okay, so that means out here in the tip, you want it right in here, you're going to want it about 18 degrees. And 18 degrees is a good angle, okay? It actually chops really good. And, it, and the other thing is, it's a fairly tough angle. Now, what we need to do, how do you find out what 18 degrees is? So, if we divide the axe in half, which we need to do, I'll use a different color for that. Let's use blue, okay? So, because we're only going to deal with half of the angle, right? We're going to come through here halfway. So, what we want to know is, when we come up this way, we want 18 degrees. So, this angle here is going to be 9 degrees. Okay, now we know... We can still see this. We know that in a right angle triangle, if we want to find out X, so this is the height, okay? This is how high we want to be here, okay? And of course, we know we can measure this. We can measure from here the whole way down to here, okay? We can measure this. We'll call this Y. So the uh, tangent. The tangent of this angle, which is a tangent of 9 degrees, will tell us if we multiply this side by the tangent of 9 degrees, it will give us x. Okay? So, very simple. So, all we really need to know is what's the tangent of 9 degrees. So, when I did that on my little, uh, my little calculator on my phone, it said it is 0.15. Eight is the tangent of nine degrees. So when I measure this axe, and let's do that right now, okay? So if we measure the axe, so so what you want to do, actually a couple of things, but I'm going to measure the axe from right here where my pivot point is. You want to know where you're going to actually be setting up your your filing your 
your file. So, okay, if you're going to use a file on this, what you're going to do is you're going to set up a block. Okay, so say, say we're using this file here. You're going to set something up so that you have 9 degrees. Okay, and we know the tangent of 9 degrees is 0.158. <clears throat> we're going to measure from where this file is going to touch here out to the end, where it's going to pivot. Okay, and this is, this is how much it is right here, from here to here. Okay, so when I measure that, it is going to be right here. Okay, 14.4 14, 14 centimeters. So 14.4 times 0.158 equals 2.27. So I want to be up. It's going to be 2.27 centimeters high. So I know if I'm 2.2 centimeters high here, and I run a line down here, that, that's going to give me my 9 degree angle so that when I do both sides, it's going to give me 18 degrees. Okay, so it's quite simple. All you need to know is the tangent. All you, actually, tell, ask Siri. See, that's what I did. Siri, what's the tangent of 9 degrees? And bang, up it comes. Okay, 0.158. And I think the tangent of 8 degrees is 0.14. The tangent of 7 degrees is 0.12. So all you do is measure this distance from where your your uh, file or your pivot point is going to be to the end. Okay, so from here to here, whatever that distance is, multiply it by your tangent. If you want a 14 degrees, it's 0.12. 15 degrees, it's going to be 0.14. But we want actually eight, so, uh, 16 degrees. If you want 18 degrees, which is what I think is probably as thin as you want to go for an axe like this, you can make it a lot thinner, but it's not going to last, okay? So we make those in our racing axes. We use 14 to 15 degrees, but we're swinging five-pound razor blades. You don't need that on these, okay? So <clears throat> the other thing I want to show you in this, so, so we need to build this up 2.2 centimeters. So... What I did is I drew a line here. I cut it right in half. Okay, so here's my halfway line right here. Okay, and if I use my calipers and measure, I am is 0.12. Okay, actually this way. Okay, it's 0.12. So it's 12, and of course. Uh, 1.2 centimeters. I know I need to be 2.2, so I need a full centimeter on top of this axe. Okay, when you ball up your rag and put it there, you're you're around half a centimeter to a centimeter, depending on how many times you fold your rag, right? Now, what I did, I just made a block of wood. <laughs> a little piece of wood, and it is one centimeter. So when that's on there, that gives me my 2.2 centimeters. And all I need to do is hold my file on here and go back and forth over the edge. And that's going to give me. Now, you can also tape that. You can tape that onto your file. But basically, that's the angle you want to have to get your 18-degree bevel on the end of this. Now, so that's for all the guys that have files. Okay, you can use the rag method. You can use a little block of wood. But whatever it is, make sure it is a centimeter high. And then start making your score marks and start uh, filing it that way. Now, <laughs> the old East Coast Lumberjack's been around a time or two. <laughs> so, I have a little bit easier method, okay, to get this done. I do still like filing. But, years ago, the kid bought a one-inch belt sander. Okay, so Makita 9031. Okay, so that's what it is right there. Makita 9031, it takes inch and an eighth by 21 inch uh, round, uh, grinding, grinding, uh, whatever they're called, <laughs> uh, grind, grinding paper. So, this is it right here. Okay, now, I found, so you just know, you can actually get these through some industrial places, uh, but online, it's uh, McMaster Car. Okay, that's a place that sells these online, and you can get them for stainless steel, which is what I like using because they last longer than this stuff. Okay, this is an aluminum oxide uh, belt. That's what they're called, sanding belt. 
Um, the other ones that I'm getting are made of something a little bit tougher than that, okay, so it lasts a little bit longer. So, now the other thing I've done is I've modified it. Now, shout out to Scotty Reed. <laughs> Scotty's made me some really cool stuff over the years, okay? Now, he made me this, okay? And this here usually goes on my, my belt sander here. It's got a little spot up front here for screws. And, of course, you can adjust that up and down to get your angles. Okay, now the only problem is when I had this on there, sorry, Scotty, but my, my belt sander, for whatever reason, doesn't turn fast, okay, when that's on there. So I lose a lot of, I lose a lot of power in my machine for whatever reason. So what I did today, I, all I know is I need a pivot point out here at the end. So, the little handle on here, I just turned it, so it comes out here at 90 degrees, and I brought it out, and welded, I got my neighbor, uh, Lloyd at Ed's shop, he welded a little bolt on here, so I've got a threaded rod that goes in here. And then I can adjust this, so this here plate is perfectly level with this, okay? So I know that's going out to the edge of my axe. So all I need to do is turn my, my bolt here, and I know I need that up there one centimeter. And that is one centimeter right there. Okay, so all I need to do is take my little tightening bolt, and I tighten that down. I need my adjustable. It's right over here, hang it up. So all I'm going to do is tighten that. I'm going to tighten this nut. There. So that's nice and tight now. And I know this is an inch up. So when I set this on my pivot point, like this, right there. Okay, that's going to, when I grind back and forth, it's going to give me my 9 degrees. So, the next thing you need to do show you this. Thank you Katie for, so what I do, thanks, Katie's giving me a new little stand for my phone. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our protractor and we're going to go from this, from this corner up here and make a line. And then we're going to go from this corner up and make a line. Okay, from this corner here. And when we do that, where they cross here, that's in the middle of this bevel. So then when I take this same distance and I put that here on the pivot point, it gives me a perfect arc. You can see this out here. It gives me a perfect arc right out here across the bit. Okay, you see that? So it works really well. So then once I do that, I take my drill and I drilled a little pilot hole right here. Okay, so I'll take the drill. Okay, so there's a pilot hole there, and I want it a little bit bigger. I'll take my other bit, and I'll make a little bit bigger hole here. That's overkill, but that'll fit in here. Okay, I want to check if it'll fit. Okay, it fits nice. So that's my pilot hole on this side. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so I'm set this out here on the tip and score here. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one here and score there. So that's where they cross. So where they crisscross, that's your pivot point. So we're going to take and drill a hole right where they meet. Okay. I want a little bit smaller drill. This one here might be better. There we go. Beauty. Put one over in here too. There we go. Okay. So. We've got our pilot hole in the axe, okay? And the pilot hole, remember, gives us that nice arc out on the end. So now what I'm going to do is go to my vise. 
we're going to put the axe in the vise. And we're going to leave the axe head up just a little bit out of the vise. Okay, like that. And get a good, get a nice clamp on it, okay? So, come right onto it. And then check it, okay? See if you can wiggle it. And I can't. So now, here's what it looks like from the top. Okay, your axe is just in the vise. It's clamped tight here. Here's my pivot point. Now I'm going to put my sander on and just start sanding back and forth. Okay, grinding. So until it goes down. So